to be presenting about Cara Elizabeth Walker. Cara Elizabeth Walker was born in Stockton, California on November 26, 1969. She lived in a multicultural suburb there until relocating to Georgia at the age of 13. She speaks about how the blatant displays and acts of racism she was subject to influenced her artwork. She is a contemporary painter, installation artist, and printmaker, most known for her black silhouette cutout pieces. Her passion for art started around two to three years old under the influence of her father, who was also an artist, and it only grew from there. The culture shock of her relocation and experiences of racism throughout her life ignited her passion and preference for making art that tells a story derived from history. Her artwork has been displayed over the U.S. and London in varying exhibits and some site-specific installations. Pictured here is her very first piece debuted in New York in 1994 titled Gone. I included it because it was her very first piece to go big and I believed it was important because it demonstrated how her key um, signature silhouette style came to be. The next piece titled Means to an End is a great example of Walker's storytelling artwork. The five panel art piece done in 1995 in North America depicts the violent progression of a slave's life from being breastfed to being choked by the implied slave owner pictured here. The simplicity of the painting itself is a direct contradiction to the complexity of the meaning. How the child's silhouette in the beginning is full and by the end the child is thin as bones and clearly malnourished and mistreated. It forces the audience to take a step back and reflect on what this is actually representing. Next, I chose to group together the pieces Cut, pictured on the right, and Salvation, pictured on the left. Cut was created in 1998, the display location being unknown, while Salvation was done in 2000 and was created at the Baltimore Museum of Art. While being different visually, both pieces of art tell a similar story of the constriction of racial gender roles and the impact that they can have. Cut displays a woman mutilating her wrist and bleeding out under the stark white background, while in Salvation, a woman is drowning in a swamp, perhaps intentionally. Both represent women who were either constricted into gender and racial roles or lived a life of unbearable pain as slaves and chose to end it brutally, however, on their own terms. I want to draw attention specifically to the use of value, color, and space in the piece salvation. The main figure is the center of the art, the complete focal point to which our eyes are immediately drawn. The main figure is solid black as well as the water, while the trees in the background are a gray color and a muted red tone. The muted tones contrast with a solid black, giving the sense of transparency almost as if they're fading into the background. There's also an implied line from her outstretched hand to the red section, which draws our attention to the red section of the trees representing anger, pain, possibly blood. The use of these elements reinforces the intention of bringing focus to events of the past, contradicting history and society by focusing on a woman who traditionally are expected to fade into the background. I think it is important to note that Walker draws her inspiration from history and some past personal experiences. However, she loves to contradict and push society's boundaries. Moving on, the next two artworks we have are the Emancipation Approximation, a 27 screen print that was created in 1999 in Pittsburgh, and Harper's Pictorial History of the Civil War, a 15 screen print done in 2005 installed at the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Both were made with the intention to mock the Emancipation Approximation, mocking the Emancipation Proclamation, and the Pictorial History of the Civil War mocks the two volume anthology published under the same name. As previously mentioned, Walker loves to push society's boundaries and force people to face past and current racial and gender inequalities. Both of these artworks challenge the idea that segregation and the effects of slavery are gone. They tell a story of the ugly side of society, the one that history did not want to record, a society that leans on people of color at any cost yet regards to them as less than. The use of space is key in the Civil War piece, as in the images provided, it is easy to see that the silhouette domain dominates the frame. That is what our intention immediately goes to. This is ironic because in history, people of color are erased, and the white people are pushed forward. and not pre- The people of color are not presented as they should be, and the piece directly goes against this and challenges it. Throughout all of the artworks, the use of value is extremely important. The contrast between white and black not only makes the silhouette stand out but it is symbolic of the different lives that white people and people of color live one being pristine and clean and the other notably dirtier and regarded to as more negative this is, allows her use of organic shapes to really pop because they are present in every single silhouette piece of art as they are all the general shape of a stereotypical human i also want to talk about the lack of texture and form in her work all of her pieces presented today are not only two-dimensional however they are presented that way every single drawing is flat the smooth nature of her art or lack of texture serves as a a possible indication of a new account of history. As people of color have rough, hard to endure past, these artworks present them in a softer way that humanizes them rather than demonizes them. The lack of 3D shapes, in other words, form, makes the audience look harder into the piece, revealing details hidden within these vague, barely shaped figures, details that are key to her overall impact and meaning within her work. This is my work cited and the image list. Thank you very much.